Welcome to Get Moving TV. I'm Dr. Chris Land and I serve as your host. You've probably been seeing us traveling around Peru uh, on, on our TV show, but really the place that we have the most fun is here in Ventura. Uh, we're a great agricultural place. We're a great place for the ocean, for the mountains. We really have everything here. Our, our show today is really going to take a look from the fields into our beautiful restaurants where all our tourists come. Now, what's happening with food safety? I had the rare and thrilling privilege of uh, going to the Four Seasons with Paulette Lambert, and she really talked about her kitchen at the Four Seasons Hotel needing to be like my operating room, that things needed to be that sanitary if we're going to prepare food. So today, uh, we have with us Dr. Bill Manos. Uh, Dr. Manos, good to see you again. It's a pleasure. So tell me a, a little bit about your company and uh, just your experience in food safety is extraordinary. So. But tell me, tell me about things we were talking about at lunch the other day. Well, Dr. Lannan, thank you for having me on the program. And I wanted to tell you what a privilege it was to come out here to Ventura. Most of our work is done in uh, LA County, but we are now working with the agriculture department because now uh, President Obama has now put more legislation and grants and emphasis on looking at food safety from the standpoint of what's happening out to the field. We call it from the field to the plate. Let me just tell you, so when, when we had 911 and we've put millions, hundreds of millions into protecting us from, from terrorists, uh, are, are we really looking at that big a problem? Uh, yeah, it is, it's actually quite amazing. The, the problem has become very vast and deep at the same time. The number of people actually that get sick from foodborne illness uh, has risen every year. The, the, the largest rise came from 1996 to 1997 when we went from about 33 million people getting sick to uh, well over 62 million. Today that number is 76 million people and they estimated through the CDC of about 87 million people get sick from foodborne illness. And this number continues to go up. So now the emphasis really has to be placed on where is this happening? Is it happening on what we call the back end or the front end of the business? Most of the clients that we deal with look at us as a risk management company. We're trying to manage their risk and create prevention at the same time. And what we want to prevent is what people being um, uh, going to the hospital, being hospitalized, being ill, and unfortunately even perishing that number continues to grow. So we're looking at all the aspects of it and fortunately our company does A to Z. We, we do everything from food safety training to HACCP, which is Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point. It's the Cadillac of food safety. All food processors in the United States must be HACCP certified. So my company can come in, set up a HACCP plan as well as certifying that plan. So if I'm in a restaurant, let's say, why couldn't I go to the Marriott uh, they say, oh, you want a rare steak? Not happening. Sorry. No. No, it's uh, not. If I want to have uh, uh, scrambled, whipped up raw eggs and slam it down, that's not happening. And they, so to, to, no, no, it, it's what not. What should uh, I be looking for? Well, here, here's, here's uh, here, I'll give you a couple examples and then we'll, we'll tell each of the consumers things that to, to look for. Uh, we do a lot of five-star uh, hotels and restaurants. Many stars are there. And I remember having a conversation with Sylvester Stallone about how he couldn't have raw eggs. Um, leg eggs are quite dangerous. They do have salmonella. And if they're not cooked properly, you're going to have a serious foodborne illness problem. Um, ordering a steak, there's a minimum temperatures that have to be reached. In this case, it's 155 degrees for 15 seconds. Rare is not going to get there. Rare is going to be maybe 134 to 138. By law, the restaurant, the hotel, whether it's a five-star or McDonald's, cannot serve you that steak. And that's how it's gotten. It's gotten that severe as far as the regulations go. So our clients don't know those regulations. Hospital folks don't know the regulations. And that's what we do. We keep them abreast not only of the regulations, but how to apply the regulations to training the staff. Unfortunately, the average person who's cooking your food has a, about a third grade education. The average person serving your food has an eighth grade education. So we have to constantly train up and repeat training to keep them knowledgeable in training. New law went into effect, actually enforced in 09. 
was placed in 07 July of the California Curful Laws or the California Cal Code Laws that say everyone who works in the kitchen, all employees have to have adequate food safety knowledge as it pertains to their assigned duties as well as being trained. So they're taking it pretty serious. So I have to hand it to the health department, especially here in Ventura, as well as L um, LA County. In California, we are considered to have the gold standard of food safety practices and regulation. So we've been out in front of this curve and now we're moving kind of back a little bit with the emphasis from uh, the Obama administration and I get involved with the agriculture department to make sure that we are not now serving any potentially hazardous foods to let's say chains. What we've done is we've gotten food very rapidly to a lot of folks, real fast, but have we done it safely? And apparently we haven't done as good a job as we could have. So we're trying to avoid not only epidemics, but pandemics, because if we import now uh, food from China or from other countries locally, this could cause some major issues. That's why during the Olympics, when I was on the committee, they asked me, Bill, how are we gonna handle our foods with our athletes? I said, real simple, we're gonna bring our own. And I go, we're gonna bring our own? Yeah, that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna bring our own. And the reason is that we're gonna know where it came from, the quality and how it's handled. Most of the people that end up getting foodborne illness, let me clarify what that is, it's when something gets onto food and gets to people and they get sick. What, what that basically means is, and, and usually it's from the form of bacteria, that's where you get into some issues and it gets into issues with handling. So you can imagine when you're you know, out in the fields and you're now bringing that in, how many different people and how many different situations that food gets handled to finally it gets cooked or served. Yeah, I'm working with a company, uh, Trade Motion, and they, they put a lanyard around the picker. Uh, they put a, a radio frequency ID sticker on the box. And if, that, if there's a food associated illness, they can trace it right back down to the worker, see if he has cholera or, or whatever problem. That can be in Florida or Georgia or wherever they're growing the food. And, follow that food uh, all the way across the country. So uh, the technology is, is coming. That is correct. The technology is there and I get involved in all investigations, CDC investigations that would lead to something like that. Most of the time when you talk to people, they go, oh, I got sick and I don't know where it came from. Well, you really can find out or have a good suspicion of where it comes from. Most important thing is we don't want to get into a situation where it's real serious. And uh, visiting people, as you well know, especially children, is not a fun thing in the hospital. The most vulnerable people now are, of course, children under the age of six and people like myself over 75 years old, almost. Well, the other uh, thing, in terms, as an allergist, pulmonologist, I worry about cockroaches and mice and so forth in homes. And I, you know, we really spend a lot of time teaching people to cover their food. So if I see a cockroach on the kitchen floor, should I just stomp on that puppy? Or I know there's probably a thousand behind the walls, but should I get them one at a time? Or Actually, uh, we have our own pest control group that works in our, in our company because most of the uh, uh, facilities that get shut down, get shut down because of vermin and, or roaches. Roaches are difficult to control. Uh, the best way to do it is first, make sure you're clean, keep everything clean. Two, keep boxes away from cardboard boxes. They love the glue. They love laying their eggs there. But getting back to your, your comment and question about stepping on it, no, you never want to step on a roach. You want to pick it up and smash it and throw it away. The reason is, if you kill the roach, that's fine, but you're not going to kill the eggs. And they lay eggs every day. And then 10 days later, those eggs will now hatch. So as you're walking around on your foot, now you're dragging those roaches everywhere you go and those eggs will hatch. And by the way, I don't know if you knew this or not, the roach is the most studied insect of any insect in the United States. And the reason for that is, and, and there's some validity behind it, if you could duplicate, duplicate the DNA of a roach in let's say, and it sounds far-fetched, in a human or any other kind of animal, it would be very, very difficult to destroy that person. So there's some real, applications down the road that probably go into black box or something. But it's, it's quite, quite phenomenal how well it's studied.
So DARPA, watch out. I, I, when I was uh, doing neurophysiology, I used to, we had the uh, Americanus cockroach, giant cockroach, and reach in my hand to grab one and all the Vaseline there. So uh, besides covering our food, what, what are the kinds of things we should be doing in our own kitchens? Yeah, you're relatively safe in your own kitchen, but the key word here that, that probably most people do not uh, f fully understand the impact is sanitizing. Most kitchens are clean, which means they're free of debris, okay? But sanitize means we gotta be free of bacteria. So now we need to sanitize all of the food contact surfaces, especially knives, forks, anything that can transmit raw product, raw chicken, raw meat, into something that's a ready to eat food. Then we can get into some real severe issues because it only happens about 10% of the time, but the, it has the highest death rate when you're looking at cross-contamination, taking something raw and getting it on something ready to eat. Well, Bill, thank you so much uh, for all the work that you do and working with the CDC and the Olympic Committee. Uh, it's been a real pleasure having you here. Ventura, uh, it's time to get moving into our kitchens, uh, clean, microwave your sponges, uh, and we'll see you in just a little bit.